Well, hello. Uh, it's time for another devlog, I think. Uh, I've been uh, working here for a week, week and a half or so since my last devlog, and I've piled up some some goodies to, to share and show off, so I just wanted to kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, get get that out into the world and uh, get, get some feedback and so forth. So um, anyway, so I've been continuing working on my uh, tower defense game and uh, having a lot of fun with that and some progress and so forth. And uh, just want to show off what, I, what I've been up to. So this is uh, here. First of all, let's start off with a quote, right? Those who are blessed with the most talent don't necessarily outperform everyone else. It's the people who follow through who is excel. Uh, uh, it's by uh, Mary Kay, the, the famous uh, uh, makeup or not makeup. I don't know. Sells everything, I guess, sort of, sort of thing. The door to door thing. Uh, anyway, I think that's a good uh, uh, little little quote to start start things off with. I think that's very very true. Right? You gotta. It's not necessarily the the. You know, you don't have to be the best, but you just have to kind of keep keep going, and uh, you'll you know you'll you'll outperform more. Who doesn't keep going? <laughs> so uh, anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. Um, so let's start from the beginning here of kind of where, where I was as uh, looks like February fourteenth. So as I'm recording this, it's February twenty fourth. So it's about ten days ago. Uh, let me grab some coffee here. All right, so coordinate systems are hard. Uh, <laughs> it's just uh, kind of a uh, ongoing uh, battle I'm I'm discovering with uh, uh, you know when you try to layer you know two D grid systems and three D uh, you know visual rendering systems and so forth. It's just sort of a a never ending uh, battle and struggle. I, I think I. I I would say that I, I I become more flexible over time uh, as as I uh, you know follow this journey of you know hey is is it the right hand rule or the left hand rule in the three D coordinate system you know is it the center point for for grids you know it's the center is the pivot point or the center you know is the pivot point the top left hand corner or is it the actual center like the mass center of, of, of the grid kind of thing. And, and so what, what I've discovered is that there's, there's, there's no universals. There's no, uh, you know, right or wrong or, you know, preferred even, I will say at this point, coordinate system or, or what to think about it or something like that. Uh, abandoning the idea of a preferred coordinate system in your head, I think is, uh, the, the way to go or it's the way I'm going at this point anyway uh so you know you, you just tell you know I, I look at something and then I just try to figure out which which way is up literally <laughs> and uh, it kind of deal with it there and I, every and everything you know it's going to have its own little little view and take of that and you just have to be flexible and that's just the the way the world works because they're you know in uh Real life physics, there's there actually is no, you know, the universe doesn't really care which way is up, right? And so you gotta, you just gotta to kind of go with it. So anyway, so this is my sort of uh, attempt. You, you can see it on the on the screen there that uh, the I, I'm drawing a two dimensional uh, using a two D grid, um, a very simple one where the top left is the upper left hand corner, and obviously I'm using uh, Babylon JS for rendering and, and such where, you know, you, you can't have that, right? Cause it's like the, there is no top left of the world. It's, you, you know, it's endless. And so you have negative coordinates and so forth. So you can't use a, a traditional two dimensional um, drawing, you know, where the, 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 the surface that you're drawing on starts at the top left and that's a known thing. So, um, Anyway, so that's just a that's just a struggle. <laughs> you got to deal with that struggle, I suppose. Uh, we got the quote here again. Uh, so here I'm showing off that I uh, I have the roads connected, right? So on the on the 14th, I actually got all the the you know if you're following these the step log in order, uh, I last time I actually had the uh, the little tiles and so forth all expanding out and so forth, but none of the roads were connected and 
and so forth. So this is my uh, my little victory screenshot of, uh, hey, I got all the, the roads to connect, or most of them, right? They're good enough. <laughs> uh, again, you know, with the coordinate system and so forth. Uh, but this time, this is sort of intentional. So this is a debug view uh, where it's just offset, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not really showing off that I'm struggling with that. What I'm showing off is that I've constructed a full 2D grid of the, uh, the road network uh, you know, I'm obviously um, also rendering that. Uh, the way I'm kind of rendering it in 3D or, or whatnot is these are all, um, you know, cube meshes. So think of these, uh, you know, the green tiles with the yellow stripes and so forth. Uh, that, you know, that's all, think of those as like little individual boxes, right? And there's just, for right now I'm using like a seven by seven um, grid. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'll change that later or not. But, uh, you know, I'm using 7 by 7 by now for now. And uh, so I have to, you know, build the road network and, you know, generate that and make sure that each tile connects with each other tile and so forth. And so that's why that's a struggle, right, is that I'm how I'm generating the road network based on what tiles exist currently, right? Because the user can uh, select a tile and go in any, any direction they want. And then I'm generating the, the road, you know, the, the extension to the road network at that point. So, uh, you wouldn't think that would be that difficult and perhaps it isn't if you look at it from a correct perspective, <laughs> I haven't found that simple perspective yet. So for me, it was a bit of a struggle to, to figure all that out. Anyway, I got it all working and this, this is just me showing that I can, uh, uh, navigate the road in two dimensions, which is important for pathfinding and so forth. So that was, uh, that was important. Uh, that was, that was fun. Uh, so this is me like just overlaying the, the grid and showing that the actual, uh, what you're seeing in the blue little, little squares is the actual, um, uh, road network as let's say visualized or conceptualized. <laughs> Uh, by the uh, the pathfinding uh, uh, system, you want to call it or whatnot, uh, that I've, I've I've created. So I'm they, they kind of correspond is is really what I'm showing here is that you know what I'm what I'm drawing the little yellow boxes I'm drawing right kind of correspond to the actual path uh, that I'm I'll have the little little uh, itty bitty dudes uh, following. Um, here I'm just showing that I, I actually do have a star pathfinding working. Uh, originally, here let me play the little movie here. Uh, I, I've I've created my own a like implemented my own from like scratch uh, a star pathfinding uh, a while back uh, when I was messing with uh, more 2D graphic sort of stuff like traditional tile set sort of graphics and so forth, uh, and uh, that. Uh, works and I guess it still works, but it was, you know, I did it several months ago and I've learned a lot since then and, and I've moved on to 3D to a, to a large extent. And uh, so it, 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 and so it, it, it works, but it was frustrating to work with. And so uh, I kind of decided I've, I've done that. I've had my fun with A star and implementing it myself and uh, just happy to have someone else do that. <laughs> So I, uh, I I just found a, a nice library, a JavaScript library for doing a star pathfinding. I'll uh, I'll try to remember put a put a link in to the library I use somewhere. Uh, I, what's it called? Like it, there's kind of two two parts to it that are actually kind of nice. One is just sort of, sort of a pure pure graph uh, data structure uh, that the, that the guy has, and then the other is like pathfinding based off of that two D graph. Um, library uh, that the guy has and uh, uh, they're both pretty neat I recommend both of them so I'll, I'll try to sit, remember to shoot a link down there if I forget just remind me um, I think it's called like ND graph or ND path or something like that or path ND something like that uh, let's go on to the next uh, let's see what am I showing off here uh, so this is just uh, you know showing off the maze the the, the basing I guess if you want to call that or the pathfinding of the the little dudes kind of finding their way along the path here trying to trying to get to the tower uh, so you can see that they're trying to find the shortest path and I have obviously I guess I've placed a tower down there to to impede their movement. So, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there, right? We're making progress slowly, but surely. Uh, this is me showing off uh, that I can expand the maze out <clears throat> um, 
by just clicking on a section here. Let me grab some some more coffee here. And since I've I've made it my uh, habit of telling you what I'm drinking, I'm not sure where I picked that up, but uh, the uh, the drink of of the afternoon here. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon, so I uh, can't say tape. What would you say? I'm gonna record this. Uh, it's uh, black coffee, just just good old fashioned black coffee, good stuff. Ah, uh, so you can see that I can uh, here. I have to manually place the spawners and so forth, but uh, you can see that the road network expands as I expand the tiles and and so forth. And you know, behind the scenes, I'm doing stuff like on the 3D front, uh, uh, currently uh, in this version, uh, you know, I'm kind of playing with um, Babylon JS has a mechanism for merging meshes and so forth. So each individual little road, little little yellow road box, if you want to call it that, uh, is an individual cube mesh, and then I'm kind of just merging all the cube meshes into one big mesh uh, for the for the tile, I, you know, for the terrain chunk is what I call them. So that's kind of neat. So it's kind of, kind of it, and it's these little slow steps. Like this took me a day or so to do, right? So it's just it's it's little little step by little step here. Uh, let's see here. Whoop! Did I? Uh, how do I do this? How do I get the next one? All right. Uh, here's just me showing kind of kind of what you have to do uh, to get. Um, Visualizing the assets in your game engine is kind of one of the things I've learned, right, is, is real important. And, you know, with a lot of things, like if you use a Unity or Godot or, or Godot, however you want to pronounce that, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the major benefits, right, is being able to visualize the, you know, they have an editor that kind of helps with that visualization. They, they kind of come with a, a 3D... Um, I don't know, editor kind of built in and that's one of the big factors for using something like that right it's kind of like got blender almost like kind of embedded inside the the editor and so since i'm not using anything like that i have to kind of create my own in a sense and you know some you know I, I you know it's it's kind of fun to do that but it's it's also a little bit of a a, a struggle and and sometimes you uh, like for instance i'm i'm have my own voxel, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, asset importer thing, right? And so uh, because I'm uh, parsing, uh, like I, I, I'm using Magic of Voxel for my voxel models currently, and then it has obviously a file format that it spits out, right? And then I have a parser, uh, which I'll show in the next uh, screen here, uh, that like like takes that file, right, parses it, and then I, uh, uh, you know, transform that into Babylon JS uh, uh, particles and, and so forth, right? L little cubes, really, basically. Um, and so, uh, because I'm kind of doing this all my myself, I don't, you know, I have to write a lot of stuff, right? And one of the things <laughs> this, that, you know, to get, you know, that you've heard the term uh, pixel perfect. Well, you know, voxel perfect is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing as well, right? And try to get the voxels kind of lined up in the correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's fiddly, is what I, is what I'll say. But so, you know, because you know, Magic of Voxel has its own coordinate system, right? That it wants to use. You know, which way's front, which way's back. Which you, you see here, the little uh, cubes I'm using, little uh, test cubes, like the T T's on top for top, F on front for front, R for right, and so forth, right? Uh, it's like I actually had to just write out a little uh, <laughs> little voxel text, test cube uh, to kind of get all that straight from, you know, what, what does Magic of Voxel think this front is versus, you know, uh, Babylon JS and, and so forth, and or yeah, it, it, it's just sort of sort of funny. Uh, well, it's funny, but it's a lot of work actually uh, to, to get all that, you know, situated. So anyway, that's just me showing that that's kind of what you got to do sometimes. Um, so so here's an interesting thing. So I'll, I'll show this off real quick. So this is a little, uh, I forked this um, from this guy here, Kev Kevetzler, if that's Kevin probably would be my guess. Um, uh, anyway, for this, this guy wrote this, this parser 
probably about two or three years ago. And then he kind of, you know, semi abandoned it, let's say, you know, but you know, good, good on him for, for publishing it into the world. Uh, and so I, I, you know, he, you know, there were some existing like, um, pull requests or bug fixes and stuff like that on, on his and, uh, version. And, you know, so I just decided I needed to kind of, uh, well, fork it and kind of add to it a little bit here. So that's, that's what I did, uh, you know, for a day or two kind of spent, you know, uh, forking his code and kind of, uh, making, you know, kind of making it my own in a sense, like I'm kind of re, I kind of redid the parser a bit to kind of make it more friendly for what I'm trying to do and, and so forth. Um, so this is a thing that exists. If you're, you're into voxel stuff, uh, feel free to to use this. I've licensed it underneath MIT. And that's kind of an important uh, little little thing. I, I it's, it's Kind of an interesting thing. So when I fork this, you'll notice, like I'll, I'll, I'll click on his little fork, right? Or his original. Like it's 16 days ago. Like note, note the timing here. So I wrote this 16 days ago, right? Uh, hey, look, 14 days ago, he, he updated some stuff. So what happened is, and I AI, this is probably pretty common, is uh, um, someone notices that, hey, you're getting some issues and, and, and stuff. And I, I posted a particular issue. Um, this is I was exploring using his uh, um, parser uh, saying, uh, hey, I'm doing a fork, but I noticed you don't have a license file. Now I discovered, you know, very quickly uh, that he did have a, a license. It was just inside of, uh, his package JSON file. Right. And so that's what it was published as underneath NPM. And obviously that was, uh, the license that I used for his, um, uh, code. Right. But then, you know, and then I wrote a, a little, uh, issue, right? Hey, you didn't, uh, let me see if I can find it. Can you find closed? Yeah. Hey, you got a, uh, uh, you don't have a license here, right? And it's like, I'm writing a fork and blah, blah, blah. And then I say, hey, you've done it underneath MIT. That's good. I'm, you know, whatever. And then he added it, right? But he added it as GPL3. <laughs> so, you know, obviously uh, MIT and GPL3 uh, are two totally different things, right? And so, you know, I, I you know, explained, hey, I'm doing an interview with the MIT and he seems to be cool with it and all that sort of stuff. But it's, uh, you know, it's uh, a thing to be aware of, I guess, if you're forking someone else's code is to be kind of, uh, you know, just be aware of the licensing and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not sure what the lesson there is, but uh, anyway, uh, I, obviously he's, he's now kind of uh, re, uh, you know, he's, he's, um, kind of fixed his s stuff a little bit and everything. So, you know, feel free to use his as well. And, and thanks, thanks again to Kev Zittler to, uh, for, uh, you know, creating this parser. So that was, that was kind of neat of him. So anyway, uh, enough of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, ATN2. So, uh, ArcTangent2, if you're not familiar, uh, so this is, you know, trigonometry, like high school trigonometry, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the trick, if you ever want to, uh, get a, uh, uh, a thing in 3d space to point in a certain direction, um, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the, to the math of it. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a little rusty out of the, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done high school trigonometry. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, so this is a, a thing I just Googled and looked up and Hey, like, yeah, okay. That's how you do that. Uh, but anyway, so you just, uh, you know, our, our, our tangent two is your friend here if uh, you uh, uh, decide you need to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of one, another one of these little fun, you know, rediscovering math things. Like as I'm going doing game development, it's kind of kind of fun to, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, I, 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 like I said, I, you know, I studied trigonometry and calculus and all that sort of stuff in high school and college and all that, but it's it's been a while. And so it's, it's just fun to kind of, kind of re-go through all that. Um, so that's that. Uh, so I, th this is my kind of victory screenshot, if you will, of uh, on, uh, you know, officially on December or February uh, 17th. Uh, I, I, I'll, I consider this my first game, right? So I died, of, died on wave six. <laughs> so this is my, you know, this is the full, it has a, a full kind of game loop to the, to the game. And so that was kind of fun. Ah, excuse me, a little, a little more coffee was needed there. Um, 
So, so that was kind of funny. You know, a little little victory moment there of you know I actually got the full, first full game, and then um, you know obviously I was excited about this, and so the the the, the very next day or something like that, uh, I went and released it to the world. Right, so this is a, a screenshot of uh, my first kind of public demo to the world and and what it looked like and so forth. And uh, I was, uh, you know, kind of, I think that's kind of important, right? To kind of get it out there and get it into the world and get some feedback and so forth. And, uh, uh, you know, so I just, you know, I, I just published it to like, you know, friends and, uh, uh, you know, Discord group or two and, and so forth. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was good though. I got some good feedback. Some people took the time to actually play the game and give me like real feedback on things that worked and didn't work. And, uh, so forth, which was just, I found hugely, uh, gratifying, right? I mean, it's just, it's, uh, uh, you know, you know, it's just, there's a, there's a lot of kind people out there in the world that'll, that'll, that'll help you out in the world. And, uh, so it's just, it's just nice, right? It's just, I don't know, maybe it's just part of being human in, in some sense, right? Of, uh, giving back and, and so forth. But, uh, it was, it was fun. And it was, it was, that's a good experience is, is, is what I'll say on that. Right. So if you're, if you're, you know the advice the advice i would give on that is that you know if you're playing around with a you know, it doesn't have to be a game probably be anything but you know if you're playing around the game and you're to a point where it's sort of uh you know it's you know it's not just unplayable uh you know put it out there in the world and, and get some feedback on it and it's uh it's it's good motivation you know kind of gets you excited for the game and uh you know you can obviously learn a thing or two or you know get some good feedback give you some good ideas and and so forth, right? So it's just uh, it's just hugely helpful in basically every way. <laughs> All right. So what else did I do here? Uh, oh, okay. So well, this is the I guess the first. I don't not sure what this. I think it's just two different. Oh, this is a movie, so you can actually see it in action. I should have been playing this the whole time while I was speaking, right? Of what the first, um, uh, you know, the first first public demo kind of kind of looks like here right so there's there's the movie and there's the gameplay with you know the little little towers fighting the little dudes and i got little portals where the enemies come out and uh all that and you gotta say it's like it's like a tower defense game right so it's uh i uh, i mentioned this before but i'm i'm taking like heavy inspiration from rogue tower on this and this was the, the thing that got me excited about to actually just make a tower defense game in the first place and so you can see that it's it's kind of very similar mechanics in in terms of you know clicking on a portal to expand the tiles to expand the expand the map and and so forth so that's that's how the gameplay works i guess i should have mentioned that at some point anyway so that's that's kind of cool and there's what it looks like it's a screenshot uh so this is a little while later so this is on february 20th when was this this was uh the 19th and so the next day i got uh um text and this was very this was kind of an interesting discovery so this is little speech bubbles above the uh uh, uh little enemy dudes right and you see here he's saying oh no i got killed or whatnot uh and so that was a lot of fun so i think that was another little aha moment for me of uh humor in in the in the in the games or, or actually it's kind of a little bit of a uh, of a trick i think to uh to add some fun to the game and so forth is so to make them humorous right just have some little jokes and so forth in there uh that was and it just made it more fun for me to be perfectly frank of uh when i'm playing the game you know as i'm developing it and so forth just to see their it kind of makes the little little dudes come alive in some sense and so it's it's, it's it gives them some character and personality and uh uh so that went a long way to to that so that's a that's a neat trick maybe is to, to you know if you have little little models in your world like if i'm guess i'm kind of speaking to other fellow game developers at this point uh and they're just kind of moving around or whatever uh you know sounds are, are important right like making them i guess footsteps or whatnot or you know whatever make them make little noises uh uh, it's good i think but also just like just text just raw text just to have them say something in, in cartoon speech bubble form is it's it's gives them a lot of personality i'll say uh let's see next up uh damage over time so this is another little movie i can play for you here uh you can see that the their little health bars are kind of going down over time 
Uh, so that was, you know, any tower defense game, you've got to have a, like a poison tower or fire tower, or whatever. Um, also, um, with this same kind of, uh, system on the back and I'm doing, um, uh, like, uh, effects like freeze, like slowing them down and so forth. I'm not sure I have it implemented at this point, but I have it implemented, you know, it's this, you know, real point in time. Uh, so anyway, that's showing that off. Um, and then uh, I did uh, version two of my, uh, you know, another another public demo. Uh, so this is the the, the second demo I I, I did uh, just yesterday, I guess. Yeah, twenty third. Um, and so that was good. I got some more uh, good feedback, and a lot of a lot of people seem to, uh, you know, be, be you know, they're they're giving me good positive uh, vibes <laughs> on on what I'm doing here and, and so forth. So it's. Uh, you know, I get good motivation again, right? It's just, uh, it's just good to get it out there in the world and see people kind of, kind of liking what you're doing and so forth. So, you know, again, just recommend getting it out there in the world every now and then. Let's see, seeing if people like it or not. Uh, let's see, what else are we up to? Uh, oh, okay. So this, this is kind of what I want to show off. Uh, how I'm publishing the the actual game. So now that I have a couple of demos out there, uh, you know, this is. Pretty wild, widely known, I would think, but you know, just just in case you're not aware, uh, you can just for free, right, uh, publish stuff on GitHub, right, through what they call GitHub Pages. Let me grab some more. Ah, uh, sounds good. Uh, that probably didn't sound so good. <laughs> uh, anyway, so you, uh, GitHub Pages, you can just kind of push, uh, you know, publish a website like real, real quick. Uh, there's lots of videos on how to do that and so forth, but it's uh, it's pretty pretty easy. But anyway, so that's what I, that's what I'm doing, right? So I obviously have my source code, and then I do a, a production build, and then that production build just goes to a, a you know another GitHub repo, uh, and uh, that's uh, you know that's how I'm doing publishing the the stuff, and then I just have a click to play here, or I actually, I, what I do is I, I just, uh, publish the, uh, you know, the actual URL to the, to the, to the game to get people there quicker. Um, but that's available on my public GitHub repo. If you want to just take a look at it, uh, the, uh, and then the, here's the, the game as it stands, stands today, right? So I can hit play here. Again, I apologize. No sound. Uh, I, I still haven't, uh, installed the little plugin thing for OBS to be able to capture, um, sounds from, uh, windows, but yeah, whatever. Uh, there, there are not many sounds yet and what sounds there are pretty much just, uh, uh, what would I call them? Uh, works in progress. All right. So there's the dude. I kind of missed that dude. There's a cool down when he first placed the towers. So one of the neat things I, I did, um, with the second, iteration, one of the big improvements I made, uh, was this reward screen. And so that's really added a lot of, uh, depth and complexity and fun to the game. Uh, so like rogue tower, you can, uh, uh, basically, you know, kind of upgrade your towers and so forth. Uh, I'm taking a little bit of a different take here on this in that it seems to be working well of having kind of a, uh, how would I phrase this? Uh, you, you, <laughs> every card has negatives and positives that right now they're just strictly random, right? So there's no real balancing in the game yet, right? It's just sort of wild west in, in a sense. Um, but, uh, that's a whole nother, uh, who knows how long that's going to take me. But, uh, the, uh, the thing I'm doing is that you, when you choose a reward, uh, it applies to all the future towers of, of this kind, right? Oh, hey, you get a negative uh, cost reduction, right? Uh, which I discovered was way too generous. <laughs> you could actually get into a situation where you could actually make money by playing ta placing towers, which is, you know, not, not intended, obviously. Uh, and then uh, the uh, uh, wh whatever towers are currently on the map, right? It applies to those, right? So you have increased firepower and fire rate and range and so forth. And then always, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining what these things are and so forth. So that's another thing I got to improve on and so forth, but you know, an endless number of things to improve on. So anyway, so part of the, the strategy of the game actually is choosing which rewards to take 
uh, and uh, which rewards to skip, right? Because because you know some some things are a benefit. Hey, uh, eh, smaller is better. Like I said, these it's hard to decipher uh, for, for 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 players. I feel what this all means. So I gotta improve on that. Anyway, so th that's negative. That's negative. That's negative. That's a positive, right? You get a you get a damage over time with this. So is this damage over time worth? reduce firepower and so forth for all the existing launchers, right? All, all the existing launchers get all these benefits or negatives, right? Um, and then for all future launchers, they don't get any of this stuff, but currently they get like cost minus two, so they get a reduced cost. So is that, you know, worthwhile kind of trade-off and, and so forth? And I'm, I'm finding that's adding a lot of, a lot of depth, complexity and fun to the game. So I'm, uh, that was, that was a big, big win when I uh, implemented that reward system. And obviously you can choose the skip, right? Skipping is an important thing, right? So you get a reward at the end of every screen, but it, you know, it might not be worthwhile taking. And uh, so that's kind of where the, the thing stands at the moment. I'll send, I'll, you know, if you're watching this wherever, I'll uh, have a link to a playable demo uh, so you can play this, uh, you know, whatever the current iteration of, of the demo is. Um, as, as you click on that link, <laughs> it might not be version 002 public demo uh, for EF, blah, 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 right? So it'll, it'll probably be a little bit later. So I'm making, I'm making uh, you know, pushing out uh, uh, updates as, as I make improvements to the game and so forth. So uh, anyway, that's, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, I'll go into the code a little bit for the people that are interested in the code. So my fellow game devs, I know I always enjoy uh, looking at other people, um, other people's code, like, uh, you know, game developer people's code. Well, people, people's a code general, right? I'm, I'm a software developer, uh, in general, <laughs> That's the, I'm, I'm a uh, software geek, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, uh, anyway, let's, let's get onto some code here real quick. So this has been about half an hour. So thanks for your time and attention. If you're going to sign off now, I appreciate it. Well, let's get into some code here a little bit uh, while we're while we're chatting. Um, what do I want to show off here? Um, I'm really not sure what people are interested in. So if you're interested in a particular thing, let me know, uh, and I'll you know I'll go into more depth and so forth. There's a lot of code at this point. Maybe that's just a, a thing to, to note in general. Is that you know I've been coding on this thing for I don't know. A uh, month and a half or so, I don't know. Uh, and uh, so I've just, you know, you just sort of accrete code over time. And so how to organize the code is a challenge, right? And so that's a, a thing I'll just say is, uh, uh, you know, it's, I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing this, but it's just like having some sort of organizational system and kind of sticking to it, I'm discovering is, um, uh, quite important so it's just it's important for two reasons one just the like in the moment as you're coding uh the project uh to to you know just kind of keep everything organized and in your head and so forth uh but the other other thing is like as i've gone through this journey over the past i don't know a couple of years or so of game development um you know obviously i write i have a little 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 libraries little tools that i kind of create for myself and so forth as i you know, this little, little little private library of, of stuff <laughs> uh, that that helps me out. You know, for the next project, and so you know, if if you organize it well in the current project, it makes it easier to kind of extract it and pull it out into a to a library that you can use elsewhere. Um, let's see if I can give you. Let me give you a little hint of that actually. Package JSON. So look at all this stuff that begins .mjt dev. Right, all this stuff. That's all little, you know, little little modules or libraries, whatever you want to call it, that I've created over time, uh, over the past like two years, um, that I've, you know, found useful in one, you know, one study, and then I kind of steal it and, and and so forth, and I've kind of built up this, you know, a mass this little, um, uh, little private ecosystem of code over time. Now, you know, there's different ways of approaching everything. Uh, for, for me, I, I find it helpful to, like if I'm gonna grasp a particular 
subject to um, kind of write my own code for it so that I, you know, kind of know how it works and also I can modify it to my heart's content so to actually customize it to, to my particular needs and so forth. So for instance, like the math library, right? So uh, that, that one I'm actually kind of kind of proud of. I, I might actually publish that to the world at some point. Uh, uh, but that, that like does like, you know, every uh, game engine and, and so forth has its own idea of what a point is, right? And what a vector is and what, you know, how to do calculations on curves and, you know, Bezier curves and all that sort of stuff. And so it gets, uh, it's nice to have, uh, you know, one library to kind of rule them all in a sense, right? That like, I, I know, like my idea of a vector, I know how to, to work with it. I know how to transform, you know, my, and my math library is very accepting of all the other people who think they know what a vector is, <laughs> right? You know, cause you know, they're all, oh, my, my, my vector has a dot X and a dot Y. No, no, no. My vector is an array of two elements. You know, everybody has a different idea of that. Uh, so uh, anyway, so it's just good to have, I think, build up this little arsenal of, of, of tools over time, you know, it, and it's, it's not perfect. It's not great. Like, so for, for instance, my pathfinder, right? So that's where I have the a star, uh, implementation I have that's crap, right? It's just not very good. And, uh, uh, so I found a, you know, a better one at this point. Right. And so I'll probably just stop using this particular guy in, um, in lieu of the, you know, the kind of the better, library that's just out there freely in the world. Now I might actually create a wrapper. What I do a lot of times is I'll create a wrapper for a, a third party library to um, kind of uh, abstract over it. Um, and so that way it gives me the flexibility if I wanna change the underlying like implementation. Um, and then I'm just coding to an interface. And so I, I'll, I'll do that every every now and then uh, for certain things. And I, 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 I find that helpful as well. Um, so you can just see that I've, I've built up quite the little core. Oh, Hey, I can tell you what library it was uh, in the array was the, the library that, uh, I'm using. I'm also using, uh, I guess D3 here's the array thing, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, you can just see all the, the libraries and stuff that I'm using or find interesting. I don't know if somebody probably finds this interesting, maybe who knows. Um, so what else do we got here? Uh, let's, let's, let's just go. I'm just going to show you one thing and then we'll, we'll sign off here. Uh, I'm just going just going to show you the game components. I'm just going to show you the list of my components because this, this kind of continues to grow. And this is probably the thing that I'm, uh, uh, I don't want to say struggling with, but it's, this is a beast, right? Uh, and this is a, uh, like, like, what components do you have in your ECS system, right? How do you actually, you know, package them correctly? And what's the right, um, you know, what what can be reused and what isn't very good for reuse and, and that sort of thing in your components? And that's, I'd say that's probably where I'm at currently with, you know, I, I, I'm where, where it's like I'm, I, I haven't mastered this yet, right? It's 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 where I've, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my little component system, uh, but it's you know, the, the, the names of things are important, right? That's one of the, my primary <laughs> sayings, uh, I guess in, in, in life or it's not just me, but, uh, is, you know, naming things is quite important in software development. And, uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of where, I, that's the, 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 the tip of the spear. This is, this is where I'm, I'm kind of struggling a little bit here is, is how to name all these things for, for proper reuse, you know, for, cause one entity might have a, a movement goal and another might not, but it might not be in the quite the right situation or something, you know, what is normal speed versus speed and stuff, you know? So it's, it's you know, I'm just kind of struggling with that a little bit. So it's, but you know, this is, you know, all art's messy in a sense. Right. And so it's like, this might just be the way it like, like if I ever get to the point where I kind of really release this to, you know, a wider public audience, uh, yeah, a lot of this mess, quote unquote, might just be there, right? It might just be the way that it is. Um, but anyway, so that's that's how I'm doing my my components, and then obviously I have my little ECS system and so forth. And this is how I do uh, modules in uh, 
in uh, TypeScript, right? As so I just create a little little constant, you know, with uh, all the little uh, like add system here. I'll just go go to that definition. You know, I'll just kind of show this. I'm just showing off random stuff at this point. You know, so this is how I effectively do, um, you know, functions and modules and, and that sort of stuff in, in, the, in the TypeScript uh, environment. I don't do classes. I think classes in JavaScript are kind of broken in, in a sense because, uh, you know, of, of the history <laughs> uh, uh, of it. And it's just, it, and now I'm just, it, it's this point in my uh, software development uh, life, I guess. I'm, I'm just not a fan of OO, uh, so I'm, I'm more of a functional guy. So I just I just do everything with functions and just straight objects. Um, so uh, anyway, that's all that. I'm just rambling at this point. So I'll, I'll uh, you know, we'll... We'll just uh, end on an exciting screenshot here, or you can see as I'm playing the game here. But uh, anyway, thanks for thanks for uh, you know tuning in here and listening to me ramble and and so forth. If there's anything you want me to go into more deep depth into or whatnot, uh, just uh, let me know and uh, happy to talk about it. But other than that, thanks for your time and attention and uh, appreciate it. And I'll keep up with this. I think this is a project that I'm, I'm enjoying working on. So I'll, I'll definitely, uh, uh, get it to the point where, uh, you know, I'm, you know, maybe happy releasing this to the world. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, thanks. Thanks again for your time and attention and I'll uh, catch you guys later. Bye.